Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm glad that you could join us this morning over the internet for this service of Oak Chapel United Methodist Church. I'm Dick Glassbrook. I'm a member at Oak Chapel. I'd like to extend a special welcome to all the fathers who were able to join us this morning. If I were actually at Oak Chapel, I would be standing in the parking lot underneath a pop-up tent, which as I was preparing for this morning, I was reminded of the first chapter of the Gospel of John, the 14th verse, which in the King James Version begins, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Going back to the Greek, the word we translate as dwelt or lived among us is actually tabernacled or tented. God is with us wherever we are, whether we are in our building or out in a pop-up tent. And actually, God is with us wherever we are. God is bigger than a building or a tent. God is bigger than all outdoors. Likewise, God doesn't just show up on Sunday morning. God is always with us, and it is good to be with this community of believers. But it is important to remember that we are never alone, because God is always with us wherever we are. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for your constant presence wherever we may be. We come before you at this time to worship you and to ask for your guidance for our life journeys. Fill us with your spirit to sustain us through whatever lies ahead and open our ears to hear your message and open our hearts to the people we meet. Amen. The scripture lesson this morning comes from the fourth chapter of the Gospel of Mark. At the beginning of the chapter, Jesus is teaching a large crowd by the Sea of Galilee. The crowd was so large, Jesus had gotten into a boat to teach while most of the crowd stayed on land. At the beginning of this story, Jesus was teaching the crowd in parables. Now we pick up the story that evening after he finished teaching. This is from the fourth chapter of Mark, verses 35 through 41. On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion, and they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Who among us wants to be on a sinking ship? Would you like to go for a cruise on the Titanic? Now, I am not a boat person. I will occasionally get into a small boat on a lake or a river where I can see the shore. Fifty years ago, on a vacation to Maine and New Brunswick, I took the ferry across the Bay of Fundy to and from Grand Manan Island. That was it. I not only don't want to be on a sinking ship, I don't want to be on a ship, period. In the scripture today, 
we hear that Jesus and the disciples are caught in a violent storm after they set out across the Sea of Galilee. Some of Jesus' disciples were no strangers to the sea. They were fishermen by trade when Jesus called them to follow him. They knew the dangers. Their boats were not huge ships with marvelous stabilization technology that could ride out a storm without serious consequences. They had relatively small wooden boats that were open to the elements. We are told the waves beat into the boat, so the boat was already being swamped. They were on a body of water that was notorious for violent storms that came up quickly, and now they were in one of those storms. Psalm 107, verse 26, speaks of sailors in a storm on the sea who, in their peril, their courage melted away. In this uncertain and dangerous situation, we see the same response from the disciples. And Jesus' response was the same as what follows in Psalm 107 in verses 28 and 29. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he brought them out from their distress. He made the storm be still, and the waves of the sea were hushed. In our story, Jesus was asleep in the stern of the boat. Even though the text is translated as cushion, that cushion was not something soft and cushy. It was a low bench in the stern where the steerman could sit. The disciples woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Now, I'm not sure what the di uh, disciples expected Jesus to do when they woke him. Yes, they had seen him perform other miracles before, but after Jesus calmed the storm, they were amazed. The last two verses pertain more to more than just the disciples. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this? that even the wind and the sea obey him. Now, life in the early church was not without peril. Early Christians were persecuted and challenged in many ways. An early symbol of the church was a storm-tossed boat. The question to the early church was the same question from Jesus in the boat on the Sea of Galilee. Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? Many early Christians died for their faith. Others faced hardship and possible death as they spread their faith to Gentile nations. The reason they responded to Christ's call in their life is that they knew the answer to the question, Who then is this? How about the church today? Are we afraid? Do we have faith? Is the church universal gaining strength? Or have we become weak and afraid? In October 2019, the Pew Research Center published a report that I found alarming. The religious landscape of the United States continues to change at a rapid clip. In Pew Research Center telephone surveys conducted in 2018 and 2019, 65% of American adults describe themselves as, who describe themselves as Christians when asked about their religion. <coughs> Excuse me. This was down 12 percentage points over the past decade. Meanwhile, the religiously unaffiliated share of the population, consisting of people who describe their religious identity as atheistic, agnostic, or nothing in particular, now stands at 26%, up from 17% in 2009. 
It seems as if a growing number of Americans have abandoned their faith or have just given up. People certainly don't want to be on a sinking ship. And at times with the divisions in the church, it seems to be breaking up and sinking. It seems that we can't do what we want others to do, love God and love one another. It also takes time and effort to follow Christ. I'm too busy with work. I'm too busy with school, with sports, or with whatever. I'm too busy bailing water from my boat to be concerned about anybody else. Or, I'm comfortable. Just leave me alone. Does the reaction of the disciples on the stormy sea sound familiar? Isn't that the response we frequently have when we are in trouble? Jesus, don't you care that we are in trouble? Jesus, don't you care that there's a worldwide pandemic and that is isolating people more and straining the resources we have to respond? Jesus, don't you care that our society is badly fractured in so many ways? Jesus, don't you care about racial and economic injustice? Jesus, the storms of life just keep rolling over us. Don't you care? And Jesus responds, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? Oak Chapel was founded 135 years ago as a small chapel nestled in the countryside to be used as a place of divine worship. Throughout its history, Oak Chapel has experienced both growth and shrinking of its membership numbers, but faith and determination has kept Oak Chapel as part of this community. The Oak Chapel facility has also grown by adding an education wing and the new building. The facility was not the only thing that grew. We have grown from just being a place of worship to a place of ministry to the growing, changing community around us. Some of our members call Oak Chapel the little church that could. Even though we are a small congregation, through faith and determination, we are able to leverage and expand our service to and with the community. There are many storms that are raging around us. The pandemic, which finally seems to be easing. Political turmoil, racial and economic inequality and injustice and other divisions based solely on differences among us. Are we afraid, or does our faith give us the strength to deal with what life presents? We may not have all the answers, and we may struggle with all the changes that we face, but we do know who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him. Like those who came before us in the Church Universal and here at Oak Chapel, we know that Jesus came to save us and that he can calm the storms in our lives. As I was preparing this sermon, one hymn kept going through my mind. You can find it in the United Methodist Hymnal, number 398. Jesus calls us o'er the tumult of our lives, wild, restless sea. Day by day his sweet voice soundeth, saying, Christian, follow me. Remember what I talked about at the beginning? God is not just in the building called Oak Chapel. God is not just in in a pop-up in the parking lot. 
God is everywhere. So remember that wherever you are, or whatever struggle you may face, you are not alone. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this time to put aside our cares and worries and to focus on you. We thank you for those who have persevered through the storms of life and brought us to this point. Jesus, we know you care about the pandemic about the fractures and divisions in our society and the injustices that are all too common. We know that you care for each of us. Fill us with your spirit to strengthen and guide us in this life. Lord, grant that we individually may become a light to those who have lost their way. And may this congregation known as Oak Chapel continue to be a beacon on the hill. Bless each of us that we may be a blessing to others. For I ask this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so now I send you back into the world from wherever you are. Go in peace and go with God. Amen.